the surprise drama of the unknown. Hello, and welcome to my documentary. I am international award-winning documentary filmmaker, Linda Baron Charles III, and this is my film about the band Electro Cult Circus. What the fuck is Electro Cult Circus? I'll say this, the first three or four times I saw them, I, I don't even think I knew they were a band. And it is a lifestyle, you know, Electro Cult Circus, they're not selling music, they're selling a lifestyle. Yeah. Well, to be fair, they're giving away music and they're trying to sell a lifestyle. Uh, and to be up there playing a drum and having somebody dancing in front of you, uh, mostly naked, uh, is a good feeling. I don't clock in, no. And I just came here to say, fuck E-C-C. -C. Bunch of fucking hippies. Think you're cool because you got ass and titties on stage doing all them dances and shit, man. Fuck that. I hang out with some old bald dude who screams at me in his underwear all day. Well, to get the answer we're looking for, I guess we're going to have to go back in time. In our time machine. The way, the way back, back machine. So what happened at the Duda Parade, and how did it freak out the whole city of Columbus, Ohio? Oh, man. Well, uh, Nick Wallach from uh, Evolved Tattooing and, and Trauma uh, organized uh, a, um, a, a truck pull. We were being pulled on top of the truck, playing music and spreading the good word. The pullers were pulling with hooks that were connected to ropes that were connected to the truck whereon we stood. Yeah, talking about the doo-dah parade. 
2013, uh, the city of Columbus lost their shit. Yeah, people were puking, people were fainting, people were screaming, um, people were really losing their shit. It was, it was a mess. I believe people complained. I mean, that's, if you've oh, yeah. never seen that before, it's a lot. Uh, Nick was banned and so was, I think, pretty much all of Evolved because of that. Uh, it was awesome. I think it's a shame they kicked him out of the dude operate for that. That was a, like, I feel like that's what it's supposed to be about. I remember a lady walking up beside the truck and screaming at us to get out of town like we were terrorists. Whoa! Whoa! about trauma annual halloween fetish party trauma is a fetish halloween festival and it's run by evolved i started going to trauma in the mid 2000s when it used to be, do you remember Sugar and Spice? I have a lot of tattoos from Evolve, Anna Banana did my sleeve. I had uh, some friends that I was going to music festivals with that were really into hooping and I just wanted to do what my friends were doing. And Anna, I performed with Anna at Trauma. It's all really blurry. Is there a lot of alcohol involved and maybe yes. some recreational drug use? What happened in the Electro Lady Land Lounge? More like what didn't happen in Electro Lady Land Lounge, huh? <laughs> right? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, bud? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah. I do remember. <laughs> I do remember specifically. We're in this room, you're not in this room. We're in this room, you're not in this room. <laughs> We're in this room, you're not in this room. We're in this room, you're not in this room. But I think we have like the downstairs ah you were in the lounge with them huh <laughs> whoa not the weirdness <laughs> that yeah. was too much for me yeah so the very first time i did trauma electro lady land had like all kinds of stuff um music lots of fun um, then there was mashed potato wrestling and spaghetti wrestling uh We were, all, we were all drunk, everyone was fucked up, and having a really good time, but during the spaghetti wrestling, uh, Antoinette and uh, Kitty Mystique uh, started throwing the spaghetti, mainly Antoinette, started throwing the spaghetti, and it was very greasy, and people started falling, tripping, slipping, <laughs> throwing it at each other, it turned into a real mess. Yeah. It was fun. I had spaghetti dried in places. Usually wouldn't have spaghetti dried it. It got to the point where when we did the basement, we'd have to have people sign a waiver to come down there. Um, but it was very fun, but super duper dangerous. And that's all I can say about that. So the guy that was gonna wrestle us at first, he had these big ass boots on like all the way up to your your knee like these huge combat boots and he's like it's gonna take too long to unlace them and i'm like dude like you're not gonna come in here and wrestle us with these huge fucking boots on man it's totally unsafe <laughs> and then we end up throwing spaghetti No one ever, no one ever say
What does trauma mean to me? You know what it means to me? Sexy party time. It is sexy yeah. party time. We got yeah. mashed potato wrestling. We have Twister with paint. Uh, we have well, burlesque. Demons. Sex. Sex. I'm called circus basically infects trauma. Yeah, we're everywhere. Off the record, have you guys ever done psychedelics? Salvatore, Salvatore Porsche, bass player of Electrical Circus. Can I ask you a question really quick about uh, Electro Legal Land Lounge trauma? What was it like? No comment. Please, Salvatore. Please. I was asked to participate in a pillow fight with a few other um, burlesquers, um, Cherie and Betty. They wanted to, I think, cut holes in the pillows. And there were like down feathers in them. <laughs> They just went everywhere, which was great for the ambiance, but we inhaled those feathers and almost died. Almost immediately. Um, but they wanted us to keep going because it was sexy or fun or something, but we were definitely dying. Went back to get dressed for the next probably death stunt and people were doing cocaine off of our costumes. We just have a few seconds of your time, Tony, from Zoo Trippin'. Are you that for guy from ECC with the phone calls and the emails? Do this. You can get the fuck Please, off my property. It's just going to take a couple... I don't fucking like ECC, man. Please, Tony. How about this, buddy? How about this? Oh, you shit. Get the fuck off my property. All right. Okay. Get the fuck out okay, of here, hey, man. Hey, just calm down. Calm down. Oh, I get you. No, no. Calm down. You want to calm down? Let's calm down, baby. Uh, Let's get oh, real calm. Help me, baby. please. I'm like whenever I can like say ah fuck off let's go just play a crazy show in a weird place and and see how much we can scare the audience <laughs> Charleston, West Virginia. Like that city does not like me or something. Some guy comes on stage, comes out like crotch forward to us in the audience and I, so I just bam him back. Um, and there's a video of that and that's really important. <laughs> My great pleasure to introduce my friends, the Electrical Circus! to get out of Columbus and go to a place that's cultured. I wanted something new. So going to New Orleans with ECC wasn't just about going to New Orleans for ECC. I was moving down there and I was living out of my car for a period of the time until ECC arrived. Here tonight at the Al Rosa Villa. Yeah. <laughs> What brought you guys into this call? Drugs. Drugs? To be 100% honest, a lack of direction and like very low self-awareness. I think we remember it was supposed to snow a little, but then when we came out, it was coming down. Yeah. And, you know, Casey at the wheel 
I mean, I was comfortable with it. I was glad it was him and not me at the time. And he did a heck of a job, but man, I hadn't seen snow like that in years. And I didn't know if we were gonna make it home alive, but if I didn't, I knew I was with good company. Just had a great show, and if you're gonna be in a situation like that, it's always good to have a magician with you. That's right, you can make the snow disappear. <laughs> right. All he did was make that joint disappear, though. So. Yeah. That... He's away and flying. Up, up, out of this world. Where the hell are we? Hey, you found it! Welcome to my home, my tiny home. Do you have any unique memories that stand out to you? There is this one time... <laughs> Vivian Vega of Electro Cult Circus, how did you join the band? Oh, I was um, impregnated into the cult, actually. Tell us what it was like the first time you went to New York with the ECC. Oh yeah, the first time I went to New York City with Electro Cult Circus, I was about seven months pregnant um, and everything smell wise was very pungent um, and that's when Casey decided to fart on a very tight compact stage and it was awful and that's the most memorable thing about that trip in particular. <laughs> Salvatore from Electro Cult Circus. Tell us what it was like in Chattanooga with that stripper. I said no comment. Tell us about Robotron 5000. So the Robotron 5000 was basically a promotional tool that we used to get people to listen to our fucking band. Um, and it actually worked. It actually worked pretty well. We made it out of things we had gotten at Home Depot, and it had speakers on it, and it had a little video screen that you could watch our skits and videos and whatnot. Um, and it played our music, and we uh, did it all over the place, man. We did it at Trauma, Comfest, 
We left her for the circuit. We'll play it tomorrow. New York City. Please God pinch his nipple. Mondo Marikin, uh, he thought up the Robotron 5000. Salvatore made the Robotron 5000. I mean, we had lines of people lining up to get their picture taken, and lots of those people, especially at Comfest, were ladies with their uh, their breasts out. And you know, people people were very sexually attracted to Robotron. Robotron could fuck. fuck. And there's some things I can't tell you about with the Robotron. There's some things I just can't tell you. Sorry about that. There are such things as cult secrets. Robotron 5000 was not the original Robotron. There was also a Robotron 3000. But we had Robotron 3000 made out of boxes and it got beaten up by drunk people so much. So anyways, Robotron got really, really popular. Robotron 5000 got invited onto America's Got Talent. There you go. That's all you get. That's it. Oh, that's it. That sucks. Well, nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Don't go have a seat the whole time. actually really gang. these tight spaces into some place we don't know. Just saying, if you have an intuition, tell us now and we'll leave. And uh, actually made it on television. You know, Robotron became famous and uh, kind of forgot about us. After, after Robotron got big, he kind of stopped promoting the band and sort of just wouldn't return my calls. It's kind of bullshit, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, fuck Robotron, actually. Yeah, fuck him right in the metal ass. Salvatore Electrical Circus, what was it like uh, with, with Robotron on television? Hey, I'm pissing here. Get, get out. Linda, you've been doing a great job on this documentary, but I gotta ask, man, is there anybody that you can get to do like a positive testimonial about Electro Cult Circus? Excuse me, ma'am, can, can I get you to say, uh, I love Electro Cult Circus? Fuck off! 
Could you say I love Electro Cult Circus? Get the fuck out of here. What do we what do we gotta do to get someone to say something positive about us? Yeah, I, I've been trying, Casey, but uh honestly you're gonna you're gonna need a more of a budget. I'm I'm gonna need some money. Yeah, money. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Just say I, I love Electro Cult Circus. I love you. We may never figure out what Electro Cult Circus is, but we can find out how it all got started. Come with me. How and where did Electro Cult Circus get started? Defiance, Ohio, a great, great place, place to live. To live. Yeah. Hello. I'm standing in Defiance, Ohio. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, what's the question again? <laughs> Where did the name Electro Cult Circus come from? I think we lived on First Street across from the Dirt Fighter. And um, that's actually when we came up with the name, I think. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that I said something about how we were like a circus or, or like a cult. Yeah, then it came up with an electric cult circus, I think, at that point. Full of about 20 or 30 orphan musicians. Um, Casey and myself included, and Matt Bauer, and my god, a million others. <laughs> and we just kind of gravitated to each other, obviously, for many different reasons, not just music. I've been playing with Casey pretty much since I was. 17 years old, a junior in high school, in some band or another. Uh, so we started writing little songs together, and before we knew it, there was 20 musicians involved. Two things of note happened in 2001. 9-11, uh, and Electro Cult Circus was formed. Did you guys start this shit? Why did we start this shit? Boredom. Boredom's number one. Lived in a small town, nothing to do but drugs and sex and rock and roll. This is me getting my first guitar for Christmas uh, from my parents, whom I love. Um, I still play like that. My mother is responsible for giving us a practice space. My father is the one that I got most of my musical influence from and my desire to play music and enjoy music. We tried to get an interview with Casey's father, but uh, no comment. We grew up in a small town, there was not much to do. So um, me and my friends would just make little movies. We had a public access show on DCTV 
called The Silly Goose Show, and that's where we got a lot of our pranking out, which ended up kind of becoming a prototype for ECC. No! And I was really influenced by little rascals and poor kids entertaining themselves with art. What was it like performing at Spanky's? So Spanky's is a biker bar, um, and that night we'd kind of take it over. Absolute chaos. As usual, it was wait till the last minute and try to find a PA. We had to fill up four hours of material, and there were some real magic moments. Here I am standing in front of Spanky's Bar and Grill. Spanky's is a shitty dive bar, which is my favorite type of bar, and we would play there maybe monthly, um, just get all our friends to come, but those shows were strange, because I always remember at the beginning of the shows, you'd have all the biker people that wanted to hear ACDC and whatnot, and the, the women from the 80s with the big 80s hair, and they'd be walking right up to the stage and telling us we suck, and then by the end of the night, it'd be all of our friends dancing around, tripping, and just doing drugs and saying we were great. So it was a very weird sea change of sorts. So our last show, the, the toilets were out of order and we had raw sewage dripping on us. What the heck is the schizo show? I really loved uh, about the Schizo Show was the unpredictability factor, which carried through from Blue Eyed Gunslingers to ECC to Schizo. So the great thing about it was I could work it into the live portion of the show. Uh, we could do the live skits, the uh, two old whores and all these kind of insane things. <laughs> or I could turn over the entire intermission and we would have some a live game or more skits or videos. You kind of never knew what that was going to be. Okay, Ren, tell us a little bit about the early days of the Schizo Show, uh, recording videos at Fab, the production compound. I thought it was so cool the way that they did the green screens everywhere, they had multiple stages, and I was just happy as hell to be there. <laughs> all about the fun of it like coming up with the most obscure concepts and everybody being on board and like yes let's do it let's make it where's your baby <laughs> we did some things that are absolutely not pt oh, oh no oh 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 no i remember how funny that was at the time Rumor has it that everybody found out that they had gotten their money from running a prostitution ring. You do all the special stuff, all the crazy things. Oh, these two. Oh, all right, all right. And from drug dealing. Did you know about that? I had no idea. <laughs> I thought they won the lottery or something. <laughs> Don't worry, 
Try our new late term abortion clinics. Is this what you fucking want, Charles? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Phil. I like to think I'm a pretty good director, like pretty nice, fair director. Cut! Hey, what did I tell you? You say show at the same time as the fucking kids. Gone! Cut! Cut! Stop crying! So rumor has it you and Mondo have always had a pretty intense working relationship. Ow! Um, can you talk to us about that? How, how are things now? Yeah, me and Mondo, um, we've always had a pretty complicated relationship, but I think all the uh, bruises have been healed, and I think we're, we're, we're pretty much past all that. I think there's some real love between us. You'd have to ask him. We attempted to reach out to Mondo, but we just got this dick pic in response. What happened at the Independence Day Festival? My first experience with Electrical Circus was uh, Independence Day about seven or eight years ago. Uh, this is a music and arts festival in downtown Columbus. And I hear this woman shouting from an alley and she says, uh, hey, uh, come this way, we've got half-naked women. Yeah, Independence Day was a wild time. We had an, quite the assortment of dancers. Um, Robotron was there. Uh, mashed potato, the rapper was there. Started off strong with quite a few people in the crowd. Um, then lost a lot of people, alienated a lot of people um, with the assless chaps that Casey decided to to wear. <laughs> For whatever reason, I decided to be the character from Magic Mike, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character. I see a lot of lawbreakers around here. So I walked down this alley, and I gotta say, like, like the show that I saw was so irregular. I'm not even sure, like, my memory could grasp it to keep hold of it. I think there was somebody in a gorilla outfit, and uh, and there were indeed uh, half-naked women, as promised. I think I do recall Mondo and Casey trying to recreate the sexy pottery wheel scene from Ghost. By the end of that particular Independence Day, the event organizers on that stage were so pissed at us that I remember the guy walking up to me and saying, I want to punch you in the dick. To be fair, we had given them a warning that that's what the schizo show was going to do. We emailed them and emailed them and emailed them and never got responded back. So check your emails, guys. Hey guys, Harvey Larkin. I just wanted to um, thank, thank, thank you again for um, the, uh, the, 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 a mix of rock and roll and burlesque and lots of belly dance. How are you going to keep these people entertained? You need to make sure you're having a fun time too because the crowd can tell. It boosted 
boosted my self-confidence a lot when it came to dancing. Everybody's weird. Um, we are weird for the sake of entertainment. Others may be weird because they have a sex hang-up. I prefer to be weird for the sake of entertainment. So this weird dude approached me asking if I wanted to answer some questions about ECC? Which at first I thought was some kind of government agency, but I guess it's some sort of weird electronic circus cult that I've been performing with for like six or seven-ish years. I don't know. Wouldn't be the first time I got drunk and joined a cult. So Kyle, what was it like performing with the magical, mystical, mythical Janan Al Jahani. During uh, certain songs, go into a, a drum solo where she'd do her belly dance and with the drums, and we never rehearsed it. It was always spontaneous in the moment what was going to happen. I, the spontaneity around everything was, I think, just magical. When you get on that wavelength and you really connect with somebody going through that, and uh, she's just fantastic. I found a lot of camaraderie with a lot of women uh, in the scene. Uh, Mike was doing creme, Casey was doing erotic and rolls, um, and instead of competing with one another, they just decided to kind of join forces. What do you see your future being with the band? Well, I have this idea. Something like that. So much fun. It is possibly one of my favorite gigs to do. It is like, ooh, electric. Yeah, it's electric. It's super fun because you guys will play off us too. Tell us about Bossy Girls and Odd TV. Uh, Bossy Girls Pinup Joint is um, a bar that sort of became like the new Spankies for us. Uh, one of our favorite places to play and perform. The name Bossy Girls comes from the original owner's stage name, Bossy Girl, whom is Sandy Rollins. She was also an ECC member. She came from my hometown of Defiance, Ohio. She was the first dancer for Electro Cult Circus at the erotic and roll shows when they were the Save the Stripper shows, which is a whole different story altogether. Her and her partner, Amber, both started Bossy Girls, and then it was taken over by Mike Folker, whom is our guitarist and ECC member, as you know. And now it is co-owned by Mike and Cora Helton, whom is the leader of the Sex Kitten Perlesque. I started a talk show there called Odd Fellows Oddities Variety Talk Show. Guys, I 
thank you so much for coming out to Odd Fellows Oddities. No. All right. Nobody. Nobody else gets that. Instead of a rape, my conquest with destiny is me. Follow up in your blocks, beat that real hip hop. Now, It's a talk show. Full of variety. Who's definitely not holding us against our will. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, hi. Oh, how's it going? William, are you privy to any deep, dark ECC cult secrets? A lot of stuff uh, makes it into the show, but, you know, there's some stuff on the cutting floor, nothing bad, but just, you know, little things that, like, I get a hold on to and cherish that nobody will ever get to see. So that's the fun thing about, you know, working with them and putting stuff on the podcast and, you know. They kind of explained the real backstory, but like I wasn't allowed to put that out there. So maybe like you guys will figure that out on this 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 documentary. Like I mean, I've got it on this computer, some audio file somewhere that they they reveal all the secrets, and uh, hopefully that might be what this is because I've been holding it in for a while, and I got to tell you, man, I need to get it out there. So like I'm not gonna leak it, but who is your favorite ECC member? Um, my favorite one? Ah, uh, I can't, I can't say that. Um, I mean, I can tell you who my least favorite one is, so. Tell us about all the different versions of ECC. To be honest, there's been a lot of people in this band. Um, sometimes I feel like Lauren Michaels of SNL with all the different people coming and going in the band. Um, I've loved them all in one way or the other. Uh, some of us have had issues. Uh, some of us are still friends. Who was the most troubling member of ECC? Most troubling member of the band, I'd have to say, would be uh, Carl the Monkey. Carl the Monkey started off as our guitar player, then he became one of our many drummers. And um, then he started biting people. And uh, one of our members was seriously injured. That's really turned me off of my yeah. So how does it feel to be the 10th drummer of ECC? Who? Electro Cult Circus. Who the, the fuck's that? The band you, you, you drum with currently. Uh, you got anything to drink? current lineup of ECC gets along pretty well, pretty pretty low drama. Why? What have you heard? Hey Sam, you wanna try playing a C note on that? Fuck you, you piece of shit, you burned how to play that? <laughs> was a really good year. Everything was going great. Electro-Cult 
And then quarantine hit, and everything came to a screeching halt. But we finally got time to work on this documentary that we've been wanting to work on for the last 20 years. Would you guys like to see it? It's called Under the Big Top. Roll it! exactly how we envisioned the film ending. Unfortunately, our director, Linda Baron Charles III, has gone missing. He stopped returning our phone calls. Something to do with we weren't able to pay him enough money and we were, honestly were not sure he was kind of, we just don't think he was doing a quality enough job for the amount of money we were paying him. So we're going to wrap this up ourselves. Um, first off, thank you guys so much for watching the whole movie. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And now you're an official cult member. That's right. To retrieve your official ECC membership card, call the number below. Call this number. And when you call that number, tell whoever answers, I want to be in the cult. All right? You'll get a t-shirt as well. Here's a testimonial from one of our satisfied cult members. Thank you so much, ECC, for making me an official member of the cult. I look forward to being part of this cult and doing anything you say uh, and coming to every show and not complaining about having to come to every show. I will pay my union dues on time. I am a proud member of ECC, and I have not been paid for this endorsement. Mm -hmm.